shoot uh, filming uh, episode 10, episode 10, round one, IHSA playoffs. Here we playoffs? go. Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Uh, playoffs? Oh. <laughs> All right. So my name is Coach Big Pete, a.k.a. Peter Lionberg of DeepDishFootball.com, publisher. Make sure you follow Coach Big Pete and Deep Dish Football on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. My email is CoachBigPeteFP at gmail.com. Mr. Cotto, please shoot your info. Hello, friends. It is me, Patrick Cotto, the co-host of this awesome show, DuPage Run and Shoot. I am also a sports reporter over at NCTV17, the host of Cotto's Mojo. So if you want to find me, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm on everywhere. Facebook, Twitter at Twitter at Picoto Sports, also Twitter at the Cotto's Mojo, Instagram, Picos34. And if you, you can also check out our awesome, you know, sports stuff at nctv17.com. And if you want to email me, my email is pcoto at nctv17.com. That's P-C-O-D-O at nctv17.com. Let's get into this. All right. Major DuPage County scores for week nine. Naperville North, 34. Nico Valley, 32. Oh boy. oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, can I set this off? Can I set this off? Go ahead. Go off? ahead. We'll start. My God, ladies and gentlemen, Aiden Gray. Yeah. My goodness gracious, he put the team on his back. Maple Lord is up 28 to 17. Um, Nico Valley scored the next 15, but they just did not give up. Naperville North, they are uh, serious. There is a, There are some serious dark horses in the playoffs, and Naperville North is one of them. I, um, I saw a little bit at the end of the game. I couldn't believe it. I seriously, I still can't believe Nico Valley let go, let go of the steering wheel on week nine. I can't believe on the it. final play of the game. Yes, I it all it blew my absolute mind. I was completely shocked. But again, this could be a good loss for Nico Valley. But there's a lot of teams that North, had some good losses. Naperville North's Aiden Gray. Holy cow, he has progressed so much from last spring season. That kid, oh, I'm telling you right now, one of the best quarterback recruits in the state of Illinois, no doubt about that. Well, he also has, you know, one of the best underrated wide receivers in Luke Williams. That's true. That is very true. All right, Hinsdale Central, six. But anyway, uh, hold on, Hold on, Pete. What? That is a good loss for Nico, though. They still stay at a good seed, the three seed. So yeah. they are still good. It did not screw them out of seeding. They are still in a good position. Hinsdale Central 6, Glenbard West 0. Oh, my God. Um, if, wait, wait, wait. If I were to tell you that score, who would you think would have won that game? Glenbard West. Yeah, I would. I thought that. I would think that, too. Go ahead, Cody. Glenbard West all of a sudden went from a contender to now potentially getting upset early. Mm-hmm. Getting, we know they're good, but getting shut out like, what? Wait, what? That's unheard of. Mm-hmm. I, I can't believe the score. I seriously saw a little bit of the game on the U, and I couldn't believe some of the bad turnovers that Glenbard West football had. One of them was on the goal line, and they don't make. And Glenbard West is known for not making those type of mental mistakes. I was completely shocked by that. I mean, props to Hinsdale Central. I mean, they yes. were standing in the water after week one. Like, their offense couldn't, you know, move the ball to save their lives because the Naperville Central. Next thing you know, you win eight straight. Your eighth win captures, you know, the West Suburban Silver Conference. I mean, 6-0, Thomas, Co- Thomas Kokoda, the hero, receiving the touchdown from Billy Sarnuko. Yeah. I mean, that's that's good for Hinsdale Central right now because, obviously, you know, they made me eat some shit and uh, <laughs> they're still making me eat shit because I had my doubts on them. That's what you get. And, again, his name is Patrick Cotto, Hinsdale. So, if you want to see him, throw batteries at him. <laughs> well, if if Neekwood goes far and Hinsdale Central goes far, um, you might see me. Uh, yeah. Yep. You will probably see me when you and Nico play in the, <laughs> se- in the state semifinals. All right. If that happens. We in Warrenville South 10, Glenbard North 7. What the hell? Well, okay. Um um, uh, uh, head scratching loss for Glenbar North, but you know what? It's a brand new season for the Panthers. Um, the biggest win of the season for Wheaton South. Um, Kellen Brown uh, threw a, a 16 yard TD pass to Lance um, Lance Coke after after Summer Dyke went down. Mm-hmm. Like that's uh, you know, 
knowing for Glenbar North and Wheaton South, you know, that's the kind of plays you need. And, uh, well, Wheaton South, um, you can enjoy that win for the moment because your first round opponent is, uh, we will talk about that later, but. Oh, hey, what do we, what do we say about this season, sir? Anything <laughs> can happen. Anything will. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I think it happened, but, you know, props to Glenbar North. Glenbar North, they are better. First, okay, Glenbar North, they're better than the 21 seed. Yeah. <laughs> they are better than a 21 seed. Yes, they are. They are. They are. I agree. It says, agree. you know, if, if, you know, at least their losses were close because they were all their losses were a combined five points. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, I want to sleep on Glenbar North in the playoffs. No, I definitely would not. Nazareth 34, Bennett 8. Uh, Nazareth gets into the playoffs over the big one over uh, Bennett Academy. Bennett Academy. <coughs> Next year, I guess. Well, but, props to Nas for getting in after starting off 0-3. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. They had a uh, tough time to, with uh, losing to Richards. Um, I forgot the other losses. Did they, did they lose to Lamont? Lamont? Did they lose to Lamont, too? I don't know. Well, I know Lamont's good, but they yeah. – Oh, a rematch of the 6A or – yeah, 6A 2014 state title yeah, game. Yeah, state title game, yeah. So – Big uh, win for Nazareth, but uh, uh, being Bennett Academy, it's in DuPage County. We got to talk about that. Lyle 28, Piatone 14. Good bounce. You know, good win for Lyle. I mean, the game was tied at um, yeah, tied at 14 at the half. You know, Tyree Swatson with a big game, three touch with uh, three touchdowns, 248 yards. He wanted 240. He got 248. Big shout out to Lyle. Big shout out to Tyree Swatson, Gabe Kunos. He also had a good game. That Lyle offense was on fire against Pia, uh, against Piatone. Um, they're both in the they're both in the playoffs in Lyle. Um, they look good uh, and they'll probably win their first round game. And again, I'll probably be eating shit because I probably predicted it the wrong way. <laughs> oh, uh, you and I will be definitely eating shit next week. Don't worry. Oh yes, we will be. Um, <laughs> we in Academy twenty eight. Aurora Christian fourteen. Oh baby, oh baby. We in Academy might be legit. Yes, I keep telling you that. Um, good, good win, seventh win. You know, um, you know, trailing, trailing fourteen to six at the half, yeah. and then you go on a twenty-two nothing run that did the trick. Yeah, it, that was. And it, this was a much uh, needed win. We Academy they had their two biggest victories. Uh, for me, for me is uh, Aurora Christian and uh, Bishop Mack in uh, their during their season. They go into the playoffs and they look very, very strong. It's there. So definitely a team interesting. St. Francis beats IC. What well, thing? again, IC needed this loss because now they're more focused for the playoffs. You're right. You are right. But sir. hell of a win for St. Francis, though. That's and that's true too. And IC, St. I'm sorry, St. Francis. They were they've been up and down this year. Uh, tough loss to Bishop Mack and a tough loss to Lake Forest High School. Uh, but St. Francis. Again, um, the key thing will be uh, for the playoffs is, again, uh, that, to establish that run. And for most teams, it's establishing that run is that weather gets cold and those balls get heavier when you pass the ball and there's a lot of incompletions. That's November football for you. Yep, 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 yep. Bartlett, 24. <laughs> East Aurora, 14. Bartlett, congratulations, Bartlett. You made the playoffs. But look who they have to play, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I mean, Bartlett. I mean, well, let's say let's say they limped into the playoffs. Because did they start off four and one? They started off four and one, right? I believe so. Three and one. Well, anyway, they had a good start to the season, and then they just got cold, and they looked like they were going to make the playoffs. Yeah. And now they're in. But they get a big shout out. Congratulations to them. Um, Lions twenty one. DGN 14. DGN doesn't make the playoffs. Lions wins. They make the playoffs. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Can I start this off, please? May I start this off? May I go ahead, go ahead. Go crazy. If you told me that Lions Township would be in the playoffs on uh, September 24th, I would have laughed my ass out. Um, mm -hmm. Down is Grove North on September 24th. We're 4-1. and one. Lions Township, 2-3. and three. You had a fig. Downers Grove North went to... One win for playoff eligible to not make it the playoffs. Yeah. You had you had four weeks to get that win. And you blew it. Well, it, we got DGN that didn't make the playoffs, and we got DGS that made the playoffs. 
after starting off 0 and 4, where yes. where their defense gave up one, their offense scored. Yes, that was absolutely crazy. And you would think, well, DGN's going to make the playoffs, and DGS, there, there's no way in that. Just like that, it switched. Other way around. Yep. All right. So let's get into the DuPage County playoffs. Props, prop, props to props to Downers Grove. I'm sorry. Props to LT though. Yeah. Props to Downers Grove North. They had a great season too. They'll, they're going to be great for next year. No they, you wish they had a better story by Kenny because you know yes. if you start off four and one, you should make the playoffs. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. DuPage County playoffs games of the week. Whatever. Carver versus Lyle. Lyle eight. Carver nine. I had to talk to, C- uh, to the CPS uh, network, uh, one of the bloggers, and asking me the chance that Carver has against Lyle. Nah. What did you do? No. Lyle's going to win that game. There's no doubt. Of, there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I mean, Carver out of the uh, Chicago Public Illini Second City Conference. I mean, they won the conference, but Lyle's <laughs> had, a little, has had a little better competition than them. Yes. It, yeah. Yeah. And it's, again, it's going to be a big game for Lyle. Next, pretty interesting matchup. We got a team that likes to pull shockers in Monmouth Roseville taking on IC at IC. Monmouth Roseville has got some really good players. Yes, they do. They, I they, mean, Lyle. I mean, I mean, look at like okay. So this is a team out of the um, out of the Three Rivers Rock Conference. They basically mm-hmm. have a good quarterback, mm-hmm. good running back, and a good wide receiver. You got um. Titans are led by Salas Brown. He's got 27 total TDs on the year, 15 passing, 12 rushing. He actually leads the team in rushing touchdowns yep. too. So Derek Chandler, the leading rusher with 1,185 yards. Yep. And a pass catcher with um, Charlie Fletcher, 458 big ones and uh, four TDs. So really, IC is going to have to contain um, Ron because yeah. he's been the workhorse all year. Leading, yeah. like the leading passer and he's, Got the most touchdowns on the ground. Yeah, and i i like I like where I see is seated. By the way, I think that's a good seed for them to, to play at. And I that's think that's gonna be it, a close game. Yeah, it's gonna be a close game, and I don't think it's. I think and Mama Fro- Roseville, they just like upsetting teams. They're a very they're, they they could be the that ones. it could be that game. Yep. Next deep dish football game of the week overtime, Cole City. Uh, number nine takes on Wheaton Academy, is seated at number eight. And rematch, from, rematch from 2018. I was Coles, there. I was there. Coles City won 37 nothing. Okay. Yeah. It, here's why I think Wheaton Academy is going to win. These seniors watched that happen as freshmen. Yeah. And they said to this, guys, we cannot let this happen. I And this team, this Wheaton Academy. Wheaton Academy also hasn't won a playoff game since um, 2015. Yeah. I think this Wheaton Academy team. They can do it. I, I think they can do it. Um, I think Wheaton Academy was a lot stronger than they this year than they were in 20, uh, 2018. The uh, Cole City's having some issues. They're on and off, but they've played a lot of tough teams. They lost to a tough Wilmington team. They lost to a tough Morris team in a tough game. And they beat Bishop Mack. But I just don't – I think this is going to be – Weed Academy's magical year. I think yes, they can shock yes, some people. yes, please. I really think they can shock some people with Thorn and all Weed those Academy. guys. And big shout out to uh, the young kid Liam White. He's definitely a big Is there? Kind of for from Weeden Academy. Next one, Peoria Notre Dame number twelve seeded versus Saint Francis number five seeded. Saint Francis has been hot. And Don't keep sleep on Peoria Notre Dame. I'm oh, telling God. you that right now. Do not sleep on Peoria Notre Dame. They are a scary team. That offense scares defensive coordinators away. Who the hell did they play, though? Peoria. Okay, but didn't Wheaton, didn't, didn't St. Francis beat Peoria? In a tough game, though. And what St. Francis <laughs> team are we going to get? What St. Francis team are we going to get? That's the, that's the main issue. Are we going to get the St. Francis team that beat IC? The final score is 51-26. Are we going to get the St. Francis – or are we – hey, they finished in the fourth quarter. I'm just going to say that. Or are we going to get the St. Francis team that uh, that blew to Bishop Mack? Who are we going to get? Well, it's playoff, so you hope to get the good St. Francis team. I'll go I'll go with this. I think St. Francis will win this game. But I think a lot of people are doubting Peoria-Notre Dame. 
But uh, definitely. And uh, let's go to 5A in a tough game. Oh, my God. This is the game of the week, everyone. Chicago Noble Bulls Academy taking on Glen Bart South, the number one seed, and that number 16 seed, Chicago Noble Bulls Academy. Tough game, everyone. Tough game. Uh, oh, what do you do? <laughs> Why? We talk, about, about, we talk about teams that should be seated at places. This team should not be seated at – oh, my God. This is not a game. This is not a game. So, Glen Bart South? Yeah, this isn't a game. That's not. It's not a. It's not a fair game for. It's not a fair game for both teams. I'm telling you that right now. Um, seven eight deep. This football game of the week. We in Warrenville South versus a uh, brother Rice. Of course, they have to get that game against a team that that scored at least forty points a game. Even in their losses, they put up forty. That offense is just good. Just remember, Brother Rice gave up 656 rushing yards against Julia Catholic. I'm just they gonna... did. They did. Well, the Tigers, they just need Summer Dyke, and they're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They need Summer Dyke. If... This game, to me, is just an absolute cluster of we know who's going to win. We, we, we know everything. But since we're having such anarchy and chaos this season, this game screams it's going to be a much smaller score than we think it's going to be. I just got this weird feeling about this game. So hopefully this is the first time Brother Rice goes under 40 then. Yep. <laughs> True. That'd be nice. Uh, next. Oh, this is not even fair, too. 20 Larkin versus Whedon North. In Whedon North. Seven yeah, I just – I don't see Larkin – I don't see Larkin beating Whedon North. Whedon North is just that team of – Absolute hard nosed players. Mark Ferrucci's having a hell of a season. And their defensive yep. line is just going to be too much for Larkin to handle, for Larkin's offensive line to handle. Next, Willow, Willow Brook. That's <laughs> Whitney Young. Uh, poor Whitney Young. Poor. And they had a great season. The Whitney Young Dolphins have had a great season this season. A tough couple, tough losses. I know uh, they lost to Taft as well. But Willow Brook. They're on fire right now. They're just after starting fire. off zero and two. They've been on an absolute tear lately. I mean, they're, they're winners of the West Suburban Gold Conference. Like, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Bombers go south, made the playoffs. There we go. And what's your prize, young gentlemen? It is a game against Loyola Academy going up north. Congratulations. Here's a prize. Have a fun time. Oh my God. Um, I mean, I guess props to them, but – and then they're in after starting off 0-4, but that's what you get. Jeez. Especially when your defense gave up more than what your offense scored. Yeah. They're uh, the only team in 8A to do that. The, the only thing I can see this – the only way I can see the DGS, DGS winning this Is game. if Eli Reed has a big game. Yes, and they shut down that Lyle Academy passing attack. If they shut down that Lyle Academy passing attack – Watch out for DGS, but Jake Sterling. Well, they also well, they, well the Ramblers also still had success without Marco um, Mal, Maldonado. Yeah, and Jake Sterling, he's just an absolute star. Um, that offensive line is that offensive line should be made illegal in the state of Illinois. He, they, they'll knock your on your ass. That Lyle offensive line is that effing good. They scare me even in my dreams. <laughs> so I'm telling you right now, that's going to be just, oh, it's going to be a killer for DGS. I feel sorry for them. Um, and next, if they somehow pull the upset? If they pull upset, I'll eat shit. I'll eat shit, no doubt about that. Crow, whatever. I'll Naper- shotgun out a beer. I know I know. Coach Parpin's still waiting for that. Yeah. Naperville Central versus Naperville North. That's a big game. That's a big one. Biggest game in the state of Illinois. Crosstown Classic. First one in the playoffs since 2000. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I am. This game could go either way. Yeah, this game could go Central's either way. run defense needs to, you know, tighten things up a little bit, and then you're good. Yeah, and I think the bigger question for uh, for, Naper, for uh, Naperville Central is, I think for Naperville Central is um, how can we um, 
limit Eden Gray and basically do we put a spy on Get him? your defense off the field, too. Yes, yes. That's North me. killed them on many third and fourth down conversions in that's the last game. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, wait a minute, you covered that game, didn't you? I was broadcasting that game. So. You were broadcasting that game. I forgot. Yeah, you were. So I, so I saw the whole game myself, and literally the issue in that game was getting their defense, keeping their defense on the field. And yeah. someone needs to put a QB spy on Aiden Gray. Um, oof, that's a good question. Um, either Ty Randall or um, Ethan Pitlack. One of those guys has yeah. to be on the QB spy for Aiden Gray. Yeah, and big because uh, uh, Ty Randall almost uh, killed Logan Frederick last week. Underrated, by the way, underrated linebacker in the state of Illinois, Ethan Pitlack of uh, uh, Naperville. You know, love to Ty Randall, too. Yeah. And Ty Randall, I am as one of the top recruits. Brian McInerney, too. He's yeah. been huge. Yes, lately. he is. He's been good, too. Um, Manuka goes to York. York back in the playoffs for the first time since 2010. Also, they were also 8 one at the time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this right now. I have this as my upset alert game. I do. I'll give you my upset alert later next. Manuka. No, Naperville Central will not be an upset. It's a 16-17 matchup. That does not count. <laughs> Manuka, I think, can upset York. I think York is flying high. And, again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm happy for York that they win the game. But Manuka is a good team. Yes, they've had some bad losses, but they've also had some great wins. And, again, disciplined football over uh, over the Fitzgerald uh, well, a guru, the uh, Fitzgerald head coach, the guru of offense as people have called them at York. So it'll be a good game. I had that as my upset alert. Oswego versus Glenbard West. Okay, you want to talk about upset alert? This one. Yes, 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 yes. It was on upset alert ever since Glenbard West got shut out. Shut yeah. out. True, very true. This, like, Glenbard West went from an 8A contender to now potentially getting upset early. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I, since since they since they killed Addison Trail, they really haven't been the same since. Yes, they played some good teams, but even in against those good teams, those games were like were like uh, Glenbard West. What's wrong? Yeah, no, you're and you're right about that. And uh, but the big thing would be they got to stop Melton, and they got to they have to stop. They got to stop the tight end. Yeah, yeah. Hey, he's he's an absolute beast. And even and, in and not only not only that too. I mean Oswego, they've. They've they've averaged thirty eight points in the last in the last straight five games they won, and for Glenbar, even last week when they lost to Yorkville they put up twenty six. And for Glen and for Glenbar West the big thing I think they're going to do this week is basically they made a lot of mental mistakes. I think that's going to be one of the key things for coaching this whole week. Um, and again, um, stop the run, let them pass because Oswego makes mistakes during the pass. That's Glenbard West. That's the first thing that they got to do. Stop that run, smash it, make them pass, make them make mistakes. Um, and they got a great defense. It just they've had it, they just mental mistakes. It's yes. been nothing but mental mistakes. But I think Glenbard West. I think um, Coach Hetlett's got them ready for this game. It'll be a good, great game. But you heard it here first. Patrick Cotto has them on an upset alert. And again, that is Patrick Cotto. If you see him, throw batteries, uh, loose change at him. Um, <laughs> well, thanks for free money. Throw baseballs at him. It, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Glenbar North versus Bowling Brook. Another game I had on upset alert when the polls came out. Ooh, really? Yes, Glenbar North has been a hot team. I, I agree. I, I agree with you on that. Glenbar North over Bolingbrook all day. They got to. They have to. They have to limit their quarterback, uh, Irvin Bolingbrook's quarterback, Irvin. Um, he throws up a lot of floaters, and Glenbar North secondary is very, very smart, and they can get those balls, and they can run it back for a pick six. So, definitely an interesting game. I definitely agree with you. I think. Uh, I think Glenbar North can upset the Bolingbrook. Uh, Raiders, don't hate me to my uh, uh, unofficial dad, uh, Coach Ivlo, my head coach, uh, head coach of uh, Bolingbrook, who people think that I'm for some reason related to Coach Ivlo. Uh, I guess fat guys all look alike, so I guess that's the main, I guess that's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> a 
the next game. Oh, this is a big game. Glenn Barnes, congratulations on uh, getting to the playoffs. Who do you take on? Oh, that's right. You get Maris. Congratulations. Enjoy. Uh, yeah, no, Maris. Maris, Maris. That's, that's been. Can Glenn Bart East get the upset? Didn't those two teams play in the first in the first round two years ago and just got absolutely murdered? Can Glenn Bart East get the upset? Let me ask you that question, sir. No. No. I agree. I agree. I think <laughs> it's I think it's gonna be a tough day for uh, Glenn Bart East. Next, the amazing Sandbird Eagles of head coach McAllister's first year from Phillips. He took over the coaching job at Sandbird, has done a wonderful job. He's got those kids believing. They go to Hinsdale Central. You go, Cardo. What do you think? Uh, well, Hinsdale Central, that team's been a juggernaut since their loss. And they're going to continue to be a juggernaut. We also want to make Coach McHugh happy. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, I think the main thing with Sam, Sandbrook is, is it's literally, you see it happening. Like, you literally see it. Oh, they're going to be good in a couple of years. This is the first thing of success for Sandberg High School. Sandberg literally scares the living ever crap out of me in these coming years because they will have a state challenging team. No doubt about it. No is doubt that, is about that team it. full of sophomores? What? Is that team full of sophomores or something? Or They got some sophomores and they're going to get some transfers. And I should say transfer portal. What makes you think that? Doesn't exist, but yeah, guess what? We got the IHS, IHSA transfer portal, everyone. We do. Apparently, yeah. Naperville Central has done that. Oh, he's an alumni of Naperville Central. You heard that first, everyone. You heard that first. That is Patrick Cotto. Uh, he, he's from Naperville. If you see him, throw baseballs at him. Do whatever you want to. But yes, uh, Sandberg again, they are a beast. They're Literally, you can see it. You can see. Hey, hey, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. You see, a, you know how you see a sinkhole in the ground, and you say, "Oh, that's going to be dangerous in a couple of hours." You see Sandberg, and you say, "Oh shit, they're going to be a good team in that conference, and they're going to be a state challenging team in the coming years." But it's going to be a tough game against Hinsdale Central, no doubt about yes. that. I agree with you, Mr. Cotto. And the last game, Bartlett, thirty, taking on Nico Valley. Three seed. Well, congratulations, Barlett. You're in the playoffs. Who do you got to play? Oh, yeah, a former Upstate 8 rival in Equal Valley. Could they get the upset? No. What happens, from if, the, what happens if they get the upset? What will you do? <laughs> I'll be eating shit. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think Equal Valley is too much, and I think I – They're pissed from last week. Yeah, they're, they got a new focus from losing uh, – to Naperville North on last week in that. So, yeah, definitely yeah. it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, someone said on my Instagram live, do Main Self. I think Main Self is playing new Trier. Main Self's going to win. Don't worry. Don't worry about that, sir. Don't worry about that. Main <laughs> Self's going to win that game against new Trier. Don't worry. That's a guarantee. If I'm wrong, I will again will eat crow, and I will say sorry. <laughs> so, no doubt about that. We have no questions for this week. Again, send questions via email, CoachBigPete, FP at gmail.com. Follow Coach Big Pete and Deep This Football on Twitter, Facebook. I'll be waiting for Instagram. some of those coaching DMs on my, on my Twitter. And Mr. Cotto, send your – what's your information, sir? All right. Well, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter at Pete Sports, and at the Cotto's Mojo, Instagram at Pete 34 If you got, if you guys want to send me an email, some, you know, some love mail, hate mail, Cotto at nctv17.com. That's P-C-O-D-O at nctv17.com. How's your, how's your fantasy football league looking? Uh, I am 5-2 and two in one league. Congratulations. You're an asshole. I am <laughs> currently, I'm currently in seven leagues, and in all – in six leagues, I am under 500. And in one league, I am – Well, you want to hear – what you want to hear this team I have in one league? What? I got Lamar Jackson, Jonathan Taylor, Austin Eckler, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, Dallas Scott, Jamar Chase, the Bills defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, this other league that I'm dominating in, I have the GOAT, Brady, Taylor, Fournette, Hopkins, Cup, uh, Mark Andrews, James Robinson, Ravens defense, and Greg Zerline. Brady is not the GOAT. Never ever say that again. <laughs> I will ban you. Oh, I will, I will ban it. you. I will ban you. Who's your you goat? Win. Who's your goat? Tom, Tom Brady ain't the goat. Who is your Tom goat? Brady's goat? Who is, is your goat? His offensive line. 
Who hey, is your ghost? Tom Brady. I can do a bubble pass. Oh, congratulations, Who is your goat? Tom Brady. Who is what? your goat? For quarterback? Yeah, who's your goat? For goat, I'd say you're Peyton Manning. You got so some argument now. Uh, Peyton Manning's a better quarterback than Tom Brady. Tom Brady is overrated. Oh. He's garbage. Oh. Tom man. Brady's overrated. You heard it here first. Well, you, well, people, you know what if I coach? You know what if I coach Big Pete? Damn right, damn right. <laughs> He's got so many rings. His offensive line won him the rings. Come on, let's not lie over here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Maybe that's, like, that, uh, that's like me saying that. Okay, if Tom Brady, if Tom Brady is the goal, if Tom Brady is the goal, then I have a right to say, I have a right to say that. Um, uh, I, I'll say Ben. Uh, what's his name? Robert Horry is the goat, by the way, because he's got all those titles. By the way, Robert Horry. From the, no, uh, Michael Lincoln. Jordan. No, no, Robert Horry is the greatest because he's got all those rings. Come on, oh, Michael Jordan. <laughs> so, what game are you covering, sir? I will be at the Crosstown Classic tomorrow night, Naples Central, Naples North. That's actually a good game. I The one thing I like about first-round games is that there's a lot of games on Friday night. I do not like it when the later weeks we get moved all the games to Saturday. That's an absolute Yeah, game. yeah. Starting next week, all of our games are good. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pain. Where are, you at, where are you at tomorrow? I will be at Wheaton Academy. All right, all right, all That's right. It's going to be a good game. And then tomorrow, I will be at Chicago Brother Rice taking on a Wheaton Warrenville self. In a, and where will you be next Saturday if something happens? I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm thinking about a small school. Small school. Oh, I was going to say, if Naples Central and Naples North wins, they play Loyola. Oh, that's going to be a great game. I'm sure that will be an absolute barn burner right there. <laughs> no, it will. It will be fun. All right, Mr. Cotto. Thank you again for joining. No Have a problem. good one, sir. Have a good night, Pete. You too, sir. And I'll see I'll you next week. Definitely will, sir.